Hey there, this is Jason and Paul, and we encourage you to follow us on Instagram at State of Love and Trust underscore pod, where we can continue the conversation with you. Thanks for listening. And now, let's get to the show. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of The State of Love and Trust. It's a Pearl Jam podcast, and I'm one of your two hosts, Jason Carapesi, and alongside me, as always, is... Paul Gilliary. Paul, happy new year to you. 2022. Yeah. We have arrived. Now, hopefully, it's not 2022. It's just 2022. We just have a brand new year. (laughs) That was a terrifying play on words right there, my friend. Yeah, thank you. Um... We hope everyone out there had a lovely, safe, uh, joyful New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, New Year's weekend, um, Christmas period. You, you know, you, you listened to us last week talk about a wish list, but you know, I'm wishing that you did have some good stuff, um, or or not. Maybe we've got some first time okay. listeners. Maybe we have some first time oh, okay, listeners. I see. I see. And yeah, and we would really benefit from more first time listeners. So tell your friends. Some, so so kindly start off your. Pearl Jam New Year by rating, reviewing, and subscribing to this podcast. And do that all before you renew your 10 club membership. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, new- what 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 if what if I have an idea? Okay. We we dropped the ball on this. We should have done a fan club, well, not a fan club. We should have done a a Christmas or holiday offering mm-hmm. and actually delivered. What? Can you imagine the delivered ramifications what? of that? I, I, anything, <laughs> literally anything. We, we we could have had a T-shirt made. We could have. Uh, we have T-shirt made. People can still buy uh, it. That's true. That's very very true. Send us a we, DM we, on, on on Instagram. We'll we'll get your T-shirt. That's true. That's true. I I'm feeling generous in 2022, Jason. Okay. I feel like uh we're hey, uh, proposition. Okay. Hit me. Okay. So I mistakenly put uh, Pearl Jam's No Code on vinyl on two separate Christmas, Christmas lists this year. Uh-huh. And you got them both. I got them both. Now, I have two choices. Okay. Choice number one, mm-hmm. I keep both, open them up, take out the Polaroids, and see if I can collectively make out the, the, the entire uh, track listing of, of No Code, which mm-hmm. would be cool. You know what I mean? Because uh, mm-hmm. what do you get? Like nine of them? You don't know which nine you're going to get, though. Right. Or I can keep one packaged and send it back to Amazon and use those funds for a subsequent purchase. Most likely batteries, double A and triple A. Or, or, or option number three, I hold on to this package. Most likely batteries. Uh, and we give it away as a fan club offering. We could. To subscribers of this show. Well, you know what? You let me know. That could be part of our New Year's theme. Of I don't know. Away. I don't know. Paul, we, we've got a we've got a contest out there right now. For uh, good uh, listener, listeners. tell us: Would you rather Paul get batteries, double A's for Paul, or no code vinyl for you? Something tells me this will not be a difficult decision for those listeners. We'll, I'll, 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 we'll make a post on uh, on our Instagram in our in our Facebook. A poll. Well. We're gonna make a poll. We'll make a poll. Well. Uh, I mentioned it just a second ago, um, but I'll elaborate because you were just so excited about talking about your batteries that uh, <laughs> we have a contest out there right now, a giveaway contest. I have three, three copies of the new Black Circle record um, CD, special packaging, um, and a couple of stickers for three listeners. Uh, the instructions are on the Instagram post that came out a couple of days ago on New Year's Day. So go back into our Instagram and find that and comment on it so you can be entered into that contest for a free copy of the new Black Circle record. And, um, and you and I have heard this album, and we had the absolute fantastic. pleasure yeah. of talking with the guys down in Brazil about their record. Yep. It's great music. If you love Pearl Jam, you will enjoy this record. And if you like bands that are... Um, in the circle of Pearl Jam or the um, uh, uh, periphery or bands that inspire Pearl Jam, you will also like this record because it is quite eclectic in many avenues. And um, go back in a couple episodes ago and, and listen to the interview we talked with, with those guys um, about how that came together, what Pearl Jam's inspiration for that was, uh, how it came to be. So good stuff there. So we're giving away... Black Circle Records, or maybe giving away a no code vinyl. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know. It's up to you guys. Or do you like this whole battery idea? 
Well, Paul does need batteries. Kids' who, toys who don't doesn't? run. They don't just run on love and, and tears, my friend. Don't, don't I know it? <laughs> don't I know it? We're about 17 minutes of banter into this episode. We haven't talked about anything, <laughs> Paul Jim Um, So this episode, first episode of 2022... We're going to continue on our on our quest for the playlist. That's a series we started uh, maybe a month or two ago. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a little tickle in my throat. About a month or two ago, uh, we call it the playlist. And you pick a theme. And this is, um, our, our friends on Spotify will know what this is. It's kind of like you put together a playlist that's kind of vibing in the same world. So you got your breakups, you got your anger, you got your car rides, you got your hoping, whatever. What, what, what did we do? Like, was, it, was it anger? Was that we had rage yeah, and fury. It was rage and fury. It was a great, great experience. That was fun. Loved, that was fun. loved workshopping that. Good exercise. Today, Paul, what's our, what's our topic? Our topic is celebration. Obviously. Yeah, how, new, how apropos. New year. Come on. New year. New year. And uh, do you remember what the rules are? Uh, the rules are you, you got 30 minutes to play with. So you're, you're, you can choose as many tracks as you wish, mm-hmm. provided that they do not exceed this, this 30 minute, uh, what do we want to call it? Like a, an EP length. EP rule. If, if yeah. Yeah. Extended play e- rule. EP rule. Mm-hmm. So that's it. That's all you got. And you can choose whatever songs you want. You just got to make sure that they fit somehow under the theme. And um, if you'd like to put a, a, a track listing together, you can go for that. Um, I, because I'm a psycho did, and, um, you know, we'll see what we got. And then of course we'll do a lot li- lyric and life card of the week later on. But first let's do it. Do you want to, um, you know what we're gonna do this time? We're going to change up a little bit and do our honorable mentions before our final track. Oh boy. So we'll go through it and then we'll stop before our final track and do it. Huh. Does that work for okay. you or no? Um, I'm it, guessing no, you know, and I, it's tricky because. I I I, uh, I haven't finalized it yet. It's this oh this amorphous nebulous conglomeration of tracks, and I didn't actually write down their run times. <laughs> oh no! So, so I'm just gonna just start sprinkling. I'm I'm gonna build this playlist the way I would normally build a playlist, and then as we get closer, I'm gonna be looking at how far how, how much how much room I have left, and then I'm I was gonna, gonna say make, I'm gonna make some hard decisions. But for the most part, I like them all the same. So I don't really have an honorable mention. That's what made this difficult. I see. I see. Yeah. So, so basically, I, I'm afraid if I cut one, I'm going to realize later, ah, I should have cut this on. Are you going to guesstimate the, the TRT here? No, I, I, I have the tracks. I just forgot to write down the, uh, the times. Right. So I'm saying to get under the 30 minute threshold, are you going to, are you on, do you have them in your iTunes? Like, how are you going to figure out if you're, oh, I, I have a tab open. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, would you like to start us off? I am. I would love to start. Okay, us off. please go. First song for the celebration playlist, Paul. Our first song is "Who You Are." Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and I mean, how could I not include a song on this playlist that contains the lyric "Circumstance, clapping hands"? <laughs> it's literally a song about celebration. In, in, in a very intimate and transcendental way. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I've always enjoyed the eclectic nature of the song. I love Jack's beats behind it. And uh, I, I find it to be very reflective. And I also find the song to be um, very inward looking in a way that I believe allows the listener, or let me rephrase it, allows the speaker to kind of communicate a sense of urgency that's tied around identity. Like if you take a look at this last stanza here, just a little more time before we leave, stoplight plays its part. So I would say you've got a part. What's your part, who you are, who you are, right? Mm-hmm. So, and then that's the last line, the obviously. Week. It was, yeah. You are who, who you are. And I think that what wonderful, what, what, what better way to celebrate 2022, what better way to usher in the new year with this this resounding um, affirmation of identity, right? You are who who you are, and, I like and, it. and you don't need to be anyone else. And I think that's important, given the the social constructs that we keep building higher and higher around each generation of of our youth. Uh, and I don't just mean American youth; I mean just as a society at large, we have a tendency to to use media to to shackle people into this idea that they have to somehow find their identity through through some type of an avatar or, or as a projection of something that they're not. Um, and and it's, it's deeply unfortunate. I saw a great film 
called Don't Look Up with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, I, I believe it's on. Watch it. Man, it's outstanding. It's a satire, but it's a wonderful social commentary on um, the, the role that media plays mm. in how we perceive truth and, 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 and how that reflects what our values are. And it's amazing how disconnected we've become from each other and how superficial and artificial communication has become and therefore how superficial and artificial our value system has become. I mean, it's, mm. it's a literal erosion of society in its most unfortunate uh, means. And so uh, this particular This is your song, celebratory playlist is what we're talking well, about. Oh no, but this song, it, it, this song is actually a celebration of, of everything that is that runs contrary to that, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, therefore, I think it's a the, the perfect tone setter for a playlist like this. I love it. Uh, I will start off with the song All Night. Good one. This for me is a tone setter, and as, as, you, as we go through my list, um, you'll kind of see why I'm starting with this song. Uh, it's tone setter, I think you. The idea of letting go of the negative, um, the, the throwing that shit away, um, leaving all that holds you um, back or down behind, just just shedding it, right? Like dead skin. Um, just being content isn't enough. It's not. We need. We should be striving. We should be aiming for more than just being satisfied. Uh, we need more than that. And guess what? We've got all night to get started. So. I want this song to hit everyone in the face. Like, okay, I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to shed the dead skin and be happy and celebrate. So I'm going with All Night. That's a solid one. That's actually my number two. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look, look at us. <laughs> it is. It. It. Uh, I, I'm going through the, the catalog here, and I, I stumble upon this track, and I think to myself, man, what a great party song. Yeah, <laughs> it's it really is. It's 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 very underrated, and I think that leaving here and all right, those those uh, those those cool no code era B sides that whenever you are are uh, fortunate enough to hear them live, you you just can't take a step back and say, mm -hmm. man, that this is this is going to be fun. Really, really enjoy that track. It, it, it's it's a perfect addition to a celebratory playlist. I commend you on that choice. Well, then we we are both very wise. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. going to go. Um, from all night into life wasted. And I think when you go from one to the next, you're saying, okay, life isn't meant to be lived alone either. Um, we need a companion and that, that person may need to see the light that we've just seen um, and established in the, in the previous song in this playlist. And if there's someone in your life that needs a push to discard the negative in their life, um, be that helper. You know, we, we've all experienced some form of a, of a life wasted um, to, to, to apply that phrase very broadly. And I think we need to be there for those um, that we love or we care about a lot and use our experience as an example. Um, we've tasted the life wasted and it's 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 not good enough, man. You got to get out of that world. So from kind of priming ourselves with all night and getting into life wasted, we've stepped it up another level. We're really celebrating life now. Um, before I move into the next chapter, but I'm curious what your third song is. A third song for me, present tense. It's a good choice. Yeah, it's you know th this is one of those songs that I, I think wears its heart on its sleeve mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, and, and and I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I don't think Eddie's lyrics only excel when he shrouds them in layers of mystery. I, I think that's where that's perhaps where Jeff shines. To a point, I mean that—that's a space he likes to occupy with with his lyrical underpinnings. Sometimes, dare I say, to a fault. <laughs> uh, but with this particular song here, I think that that slow build up into something so celebratory is a beautiful contrast to the way that opens. When you look at the lyrical opening of this song, do you see the way that tree bends? Does it inspire? This 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 moment of taking a step back and saying, do you see the extraordinary in the ordinary? Because mm. if you if you don't, you're missing out on the now, the present tense, and uh, this this emphasis on the importance of now, the importance of living in the moment, it's uh, very very important. It's it's got a, a really cool kind of Dostoevsky vibe to it. There's a, a a great children's book 
that I, I started reading my kids. It's called The Three Questions. And it's bent around the idea that the uh, the most important person, the, the, the most important time is, is now. And the most important one is the one you're with. And the right thing to do is to do right by the person you're with in that moment. And I think that we so often fail to recognize that because we're so distracted by the devices in our hands and our avatars and mm. these extensions of our identity through social media. We lose sight of the people that we're literally sitting next to, that we work with, that 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 we we hold dear as family, friends, and and loved ones. And and I understand the difficulty of that. But I mean, if if you're sitting on a couch and your child is sitting anywhere in proximity of you or your significant other, why did, why would you spend half an hour on your phone? What, why are you sitting every night on a couch watching in silence you, whatever show that you watch, uh, even if you're watching it together? At least make some popcorn and cuddle up. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. I just think that uh, uh, we have some interpersonal skill building that we need to, to focus on in 2022. That's a that's a that's a hell of a notion, and I think it actually works well off of my choice of life ways to do. I think they kind of live in the same universe um, as you're explaining the the Dostoevsky. Is that is it right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the the tenets in that um, book seem to fit uh, in in my song choice as well. So I think we're all kind of heading in the same direction here. Uh, I'm going to go from Life Wasted to Leash, and I'll tell you why. Interesting. You know, at the end there, I mentioned that we need to be there for those that we love and use our experience as an example. But of course, as they say in Leash, we're not guides, you know, um, but we will be by our loved one's sides. So I think those two kind of worked together in that sense. I think this song, you know, I find it to be celebratory because it's about just that. It's about being there for someone in times of trouble and pushing past those that seek to hold you back and to celebrate your youth or at least the youthful energy that you possess I, I think is is important and significant and at this point i think we're truly celebrating our relationships and thirst for life and living it to the fullest so i like going uh into leash here and, and musically speaking how could you not get up for this at this point we're, we're out of our seats and we are i think <laughs> holding hands together delight in our youth i mean get up right get up what do you got uh i think it's time we fly my friend given to fly mm. uh, this particular song to me was uncharacteristically pearl jam at the time there was uh, a soaring element to it that i had not heard from the band before at least not in this context a wave came crashing like a fist to the jaw the last time i i saw a lyric like that was jeremy yeah. At least at the time, well, you know, fist, yeah. you know, um, delivered him wings. Hey, look at me now. Arms wide open with the sea as his floor. Oh, power. Oh, he's flying. Hold. Is there anything <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that uh, hearkens, to use that word again, to the idea of celebration more than this track? It's just a, a beautiful, inspiring song, and uh, it's effective in, in the most positive way. So got to go with giving a fly here. I like the choice. Uh, I'm going to go next from Leash into Amongst the Waves uh, oh. to finally feel so free and saved that you feel like you're floating on the water. That, that's pretty special, right? And I, I think there, obviously there are a number of surfing songs in the Pearl Jam catalog I could have put here, but I chose this one because it talks about this feeling between two people, not just one person. Um, you know, the idea of love lifting someone up is pretty great. And it's hard to find something more worthy of celebration than true love lifting you up. So I thought this was the nice choice of all the surfing songs to to drop in here. Um, so yeah, I, I decided to, to live in this, this uh, I get I mean, it's celeb celebratory, of course, but to stay on this, you know, we're in it together kind of feeling and in that lifting you up, making you feel like you are amongst the waves. Yeah. I think it's a fantastic selection. I'm, uh, I'm going to go backwards here off your list. I'm going to Life Wasted. Nice. From here uh, for, for, for similar reasons. It's a great choice, know. Paul. It, I, it's Life Wasted. I'm never going back again. I think that this idea, let's celebrate moving on. Let's celebrate our ability to, to not dwell, not only in the past, but 
in, in the times that we wasted, in our inability to live in the present tense. And I think that this song is, is a reminder that if you have not succeeded in doing that, do not despair. All hope is not lost. Uh, let's not make this the life wasted. So, Nailed it, nailed it. And to harken back <laughs> to something you just said, uh, I'm going with giving the fly next on my list. Um, the flip side to the amongst the waves coin, sort of, um, it's almost like a callback to... Uh, they say the song given to fly. Uh, mm-hmm. it's almost a, it's almost a callback to life wasted in that the subject is removing the shackles that kept him from truly living. And you have this this soaring nature of the song kind of dovetails nicely with amongst the waves where the ladder makes you feel like you're surfing. This tune, I think it speaks about feeling like you're flying, obviously, but finally re- released to be free without any boundaries. And, and and obviously love was the key to this as well so you know he was all the love that he takes is the love that's um that he gives away and then receive i forget the line exactly but um i always loved that combination of lines and i think it worked really well uh, after amongst the waves as well so you've got riding on the waves and then you're going up even higher and soaring above everything else so um and that's more of a singular personal um celebration than than what amongst the waves was with somebody else so i think it was nice to have you know the personal celebration and the celebration with somebody was important fantastic how many songs do you have left in your list here we shall see we shall see <laughs> okay because i have two <laughs> <laughs> so i'm moving into inside job here uh nice. inside job to me is just a, a, a key song i mean we all know the backstory from this track we've talked about it on this show before mm-hmm. And, and what the song means for Mike. I think we, we looked at it. It's one of one of the better examples of uh, of, of, of Mike's songwriting. Uh, Let me run into the rain to shine a human light today. Again, it's really hard to find a set of lyrics that does not imbue celebration and uh, the, uh, the, 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 the uplifting nature of, of feeling alive and being human and living in the present tense. And I keep going back to that line, but that seems to be a running theme, I think, mm behind uh, what Pearl Jam view as worth celebrating is our, is our ability to just stop for a moment, be centered and grounded and, and, and connect with the now, connect with your present surroundings and the tense in which you live. Because we're finding that as we grow older, we're living in an increasingly more distracting world. And uh, and I don't mean that in a good way. It's uh, I mean, sometimes distractions are great, you know, they're welcome. But, but in this case, I feel like it's causing a lot of disconnect and it's eroding our, our ability to connect with each other. Uh, those interpersonal skills, man, got to work on those mm. in 2022. I am going to go um, from given to fly into breath. Ooh. I, I think whatever problems you might have, it's worth remembering that you've got people in your life that are there for you. Kind of a, a this is the running theme, right, for me. They're cheering you on and, and can be relied upon. And that's pretty much been the theme, like I said, of every song in this playlist. And this one is just the most anthemic. Uh, love got you out of your rut, your life wasted perhaps, and the journey with that person who helped you was truly fulfilling. The last piece of the puzzle then is going out and living your best life, finding what um, can only what, what you can only find for yourself and, you know, find me a better song to borrow your term imbue that sentiment um, than breath. I think, I think this is especially as that interlude kind of finds an apex um, shortly before the, the solo kicks in. It's like, that is one of the most celebratory moments in Pearl Jam catalog. As far as I can tell, that makes me feel like, like, I like the character and be able to fly. Basically. That's beautiful, man. I love it. What do you uh, got? Next? It's hard to top. Lightning okay, we'll bolt. We'll try. <laughs> what do you got? I'm going. I'm going lightning bolt. Oh, good. Uh, there, there's there's two sets of lyrics here that really stand out from this this track for me. Uh, always something and never nothing. Isn't that the way we're taught to be? Flipping through the worn out pages and stages when you knew not who to be till the lightning strike sets you free, and then the last last stanza here and your death will soon arrive as she finally decides that all her problems they won't die with you it's the control the ability to Mm. to um 
to use perspective and to make choices that don't allow the mistakes, the views, and the prejudices of others to potentially handicap and govern what makes us happy. There's something really, really, uh, and, and again, I, I'm, I'm on record on this show as having certain issues with this song. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I have a particular issue with, you know, force feeding the rhyme scheme with now she comes after the, but we won't get into that. <laughs> there are other examples, but in this particular case, the lyrics I just read you, I think are, are very uplifting and uh, optimistic. And, and I think they do a wonderful job of, of, of self-validation. And, and but, but more importantly, that, that this ability of, of self-reliance and, and and taking inspiration and allowing that to guide you to somewhere higher these these elevated heights and uh, sometimes that allows you to overcome the most dire and dismal of circumstances and i think you know when, when you listen to that audiobook i am mine by eddie vetter it's hard not to think about eddie describing his experiences before pearl jam and and and, and then thinking about where he's at now and talking about I'll never forget in this audiobook the one line, you know, I, I've lived my best life. I mean, he he knows that if there was a million alternate universes out there, the life he's living right now is arguably the best. And I don't think he'd trade it for any one of those other possibilities. And, and I think that, uh, that this song kind of captures that, that inspirational perspective. I like the choice. Um, from I have one more song left, and it's not Letting Bolt, but it was a very, very close... Um, choice. It was an honorable mention for me. It was on the, the short list before I had the chop down for time. But I love the song and I love that it it musically has that quality and as you so uh, eloquently put, it has the lyrical qualities to match to be in this group. So kudos on Lightning Bolt. Uh, I'm going to go really obvious and go with Alive. And I think forget the original story. Think about the modern interpretation. Um, I, th I think many of you kind of probably knew this was coming. Uh, the punctuation to the whole playlist for me is finally that there's the declaration that we are alive and we now know what and who makes us feel that way. Like fucking A, man. Like this is this is what it's all here for. Sing it from the rooftops and let Mike solo us to the final frame. I mean, think about think about when you hear this song live at a show. And we talked about this when we talked with Stiff about the song back in August. You know, this is the epitome of the, of the live pro gym experience where you feel the most alive when 20,000 people around you are fist pumping, you know, Keeler's brought the lights up and you feel like you're just one organism. <laughs> so for me, if you're doing a, a playlist about celebrating uh, or celebration, this has got to kind of put the, the, the coda on the uh, on the experience. I don't know where you're at in, in your in your lineup here, but that's where I'm ending my play, playlist at an even 30 minutes, by the way. Nice. That is solid. Well, I, I'm going to slip uh, Just Breathe in here. Oh, I think that's a good uh, choice. Thank you. Thank sneaky you. choice. I, I like that. It is. It is a little on the sneaky side, isn't it? I um, a little reach around with just breathe. What are you doing, Paul? Look, th this particular song here. Uh, my my wife walked out to this on our wedding day, mm -hmm. so that there's a certain sentimental, uh, personal element to it for me. But I also think that uh, you have lyrics like. I'm a lucky man to count on both hands the ones I love. You know what I mean? Uh, stay with me. Let's just breathe. There's so much about this song that is, uh, it's less present tense admonition and it's more living that idea. You know what I mean? And, and not on a conceptual level, just literally living it. And, and I think that th this is a natural extension of what I think Eddie was, was kind of reaching for with present tense. And in terms of, of trying to call out and, and provide and it, uh, and and admonish us as listeners, I think uh, just breathe is is the embodiment of what that looks like when we grow into into our own skin and figure out what it means to live that way. So I, I think it, it's a beautiful ballad. Um, it, it, it's hard for me to think about happy Pearl Jam, you know what yeah. I mean, uh, w w without a song like this. But I think that it belongs on a on a playlist like this. It's hard to not include a song from that record. It really is. It's That's one of the more uplifting ones. Yeah. One of the reasons why I had Amongst the Waves on on the playlist is because while there are other songs about surfing, like honestly, I was gonna put Big Wave on here because that song just makes me feel like feel happy because it's just about a good time surfing on top of the waves, feeling feeling like you're smiling in the sun, um, and maybe not everything needs to be so heavy. But at the same time, I was like, well, Amongst the Waves is just kind of a better song and. 
that record is all is, is very positive so it kind of has to be on there um so I, I like the just breathe shout uh, do you have an, do you have another one after this or you know i mean it, it really depends on whether or not we take all seven plus minutes of inside job i mean i love that little shimmer a little shimmering outro that we get after an extended I'm, silence. I'm mixing it. I'm mixing it. It's I out. know, but it's a, uh, you know, depending on whether or not you keep that or not, um, you know, that, that, that there might be some room. I'd have to go back and figure out where it even shows up in the track, but there might be, there might be room for a song. What will like, be your last uh, in then? If, if you're having, uh, oh, I, I like amongst the waves. I, I think uh, that, that that's a solid track that I didn't necessarily have initially as, as, as a, as a go, but I, I think it might fit with, uh, with things if i if i made that particular adjustment um anything else on the fringes uh gosh man you know it's 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 hard but i think uh unthought known has some some Mm. very interesting uplifting notes to it especially uh you know the gems and rhinestone line and, yeah. and, and a couple of other ones. I don't just mean in terms of imagery. I mean, just in terms of, of the, the feeling behind the lines and the ideas behind them. Something about yeah. with, with Matt's kick drum too, coming out of the yeah. edge, just kind of gets it's, you. Yeah. And, and you know what, what's ironic is uh, I, I really try to uh, sirens obviously would, would be another one. Um, mm. It's more, more of a, the, probably more of a just a traditional ballad in that sense, but I think that it, it it can work. I really struggled with Gigaton on this playlist. I was kind of going through, and I thought, oh well, Super Blood. Well, no, nah, I'm actually no, nah, maybe. Not. Then I thought, well, whoever said right? I had whoever oh, said nah, on there yeah. as well, and I'm like, I just nah, didn't. I didn't. Get and then all, all right, it it seems like it, right? You just if you just read the lyrics, it yeah. seems like it. The music there is this kind of get there. No, I mean, there's this bizarre kind of dis this this, this uh, transient disconnected like. Um, like Pink Floyd vibe to that song, which which I love, but I mean, it's it's it also just kind of pulls you out from from the ability to celebrate. So the more I thought about that vibe, the more of an interesting perspective I started gain, gaining on uh, Gigaton, mostly because it's the most recent record, and uh, I I was curious whether or not uh, post Trump we would have some type of of, of a, a renaissance um, well i think most of that record was written it was recorded was before there, so. exactly so it's, it's, not a, it's not a surprise that you and i don't have a lot of binaural and uh, riot act tracks exactly for the exact same reason i will say this though does olay deserve a spot on this list i'm not taking the bait that's bait, <laughs> that's, bait. that's bait i'm not doing it I will say uh, the other uh, couple other honorable mentions, if I can say words, down. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, a good one. Spin the black circle. Oh, that's a great call out. It, it was an early, early um, entry into my list here, and yeah, then as yeah. I started adding more songs, I'm like, Ugh. It, it, it's it's like let the records play, but but actually good. But, it's but better. What, yeah, but much yeah, better. And I'm yeah. sorry, I shouldn't say let the records play. It's, it's, it's not good. I mean, it's it's an interesting little blues ditty. But well, I mean, for for what it is, I thought it was uh, it was it was a fun uh, look. You know, it, we can say it was. It's a song. <laughs> Fair enough. It is unequivocally a song. So r- run me down your list one more time. Okay, so I had uh, from top to bottom here. I kind of just kind of went in the direction of the catalog just because I wanted to see how the band's sound would evolve with the mm-hmm. list. So I started off with uh, Who You Are, then into All Night in Present Tense, then into Give and Fly, Life Wasted, Inside Job with a Little Shimmer, uh, Lightning Bolt, and then Just Breathe. And then there may or may not be room for uh, Amongst the Weights, uh, depending on where we cut Life Wasted. All right. Uh, I've got All Night, Life Wasted, Leash, Amongst the Waves, Given the Fly, Breath, and Alive. Solid. These are some interesting. We're we're pretty different. We have a couple of songs that are that are on both lists. But I was convinced that, when I first started this exercise that we were going to end up with the same five songs. So I love the I fact we that too. we. This is yeah. This is cool. When you when great. you said who you are, I was like, oh, he's going. Uh, he he's getting to the to the. He's getting to the destination, the long way. Well, uh, I I took the long way. <laughs> Pun intended. Oh, Look, yeah. here's the thing: the the, the the motif was celebration. Okay, mm-hmm. now. There's a lot of ways to interpret that. What am mm-hmm. I celebrating? Am I celebrating resiliency? 
Am I celebrating life? Am I celebrating identity? Am I celebrating the sense of self? There's so many ways to interpret this that there's actually a lot more of the catalog than I think we give it credit for lends itself to this, this type of a playlist. If you and I combined our playlists, we have an LP. Absolutely. Maybe a double Who would have thought that this, uh, this, this bitter brooding grunge band was capable of an LP See, full of happiness? And we didn't even talk about the fixer. That's the irony here. Um, also short or medium list it it got cut pretty early but i thought about it uh the challenge is out to you guys now because as you can see it's not as simple as we made it out to be we tricked you celebration no that's easy but what are the most positive songs Eh, not so straightforward so i'm the challenge is out to you what are the songs that would make your playlist for the celebration theme the theme of celebration Got to be under thirty minutes, so let us know, and we look happy. We we look happy. We look forward. Yeah, we do to, look happy. Um, we do look happy. We look forward to uh, to reading those and responding in kind. And uh, you know, you guys go ahead and do that. Hit pause if you want to do it right now. And then as we come back, there you go. Unpaused. Um, <laughs> we're gonna do our <laughs> the magic of editing uh, and technology. We're gonna go right into our lyric of the week. This week, Paul, you alluded to it earlier. We are going to dive a little bit deeper into Avocado's Inside Job. Okay, Paul. This is kind of this is kind of a nuts and bolts song for you. This is like right in your wheelhouse. So I'm gonna go first. Please do, and then I'll let you pick up the rear. So it's a new year, right? Sure we is. wanted to be positive from the outset. It's a blank slate, even if some of our circumstances have carried over. And you know, eh, this song it's it's a beautiful example of searching within oneself, being aware of one's lack of self-confidence and and love and turning it around. And these lyrics specifically speak to the end part of that. Once you've found your personal center and your appreciation and love for life, it would behoove you to help others. And even if it means going into uncomfortable situations, truly living is being there and showing someone the way, showing someone there's a way to live, a chance to be happy. And this is why it's such a great bookend to Life Wasted on the album, even though we, I think we both changed the first part of that album around on our retracking. Uh, spoiler alert. I probably should have said that before I said the actual spoiler. And I just think that, you know, I know we've talked about this album, I'm sorry, this song many times on different lists that we've had on different episodes the, over the last almost two years now that we've done the show. But this is the first time you even said to me, you're like, we haven't done this Lyric of the weekend? I go, no. It's just, it's offered so many chances for us to talk about the themes in this song that we've been kind of more macro about it. And you you tickled the lyric earlier in the main main segment, but we want to dive a little bit deeper with this set specifically. So I view this as a as the as the culmination, the coming out party, the given to fly moment of of inside job. And I love oh. that it's a part of um, this celebration episode because it absolutely, as you pointed out on your list, um, demands to be there. So tell me about these lyrics from your perspective. You know, I did mention uh, these lyrics in my, my, my celebratory playlist breakdown, but I, I'm going to focus on a different subset of them just for this, this portion of our conversation. So I, I don't come across as too redundant here. The, the let me run into the rain, let me uh, to, to be human light again. I, I think that particular set, as you mentioned, I mean, it, it really talks about the need to let who we are shine, to, to allow us to, to be ourselves, to not get, it, we can so easily find ourselves adrift and lost out to sea to the point where we forget who we are, to the point where, where we are so disconnected from ourselves and others around us that we're no longer not only living in the present tense, but living at all. Um, but it's this last subset here 
Life comes from, from within your heart and desire. And I talked about this before where, where I mentioned uh, that this line really stood out for me. This is when we were talking about Mike as a songwriter. And we, we started talking about what are, what are some of the best non Eddie Vedder lyrics. And I cited this particular set here. I thought it was really unique and profound that Mike was able to take something that, you know, heart and desire in many ways, depending on your uh, beliefs and your, your disposition and, and your perception, you might look at heart and desire as, as somewhat of a positive thing, but also something that needs to be checked, something that needs to be governed because heart and desire can get us into a lot of trouble. It can mm. lead you astray. It, it, it can put you in a position where you're, you're thinking with feeling, which means you're not thinking at all. Right. But Mike is essentially saying that the very essence of your life stems from your ability to do that, 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 who, your heart and your desire. The, 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 and, and I thought this was so profound because our ego is driven by want. And so instead of fighting and fighting and fighting that, instead come to terms with it, but not in a gluttonous, um, egotistical way. Rather, come to terms with the idea that it's okay to desire. You can desire connection. You can desire knowledge. You can desire experience. You don't have to, the, the, to desire materialistic objects and wealth all the time and uh, sensory pleasure. It could be so much deeper than that. So our ability to desire, like desire is part of what inherently makes us human. And it's our hearts that in large part with conscious separates us from, from animals in a lot of ways. So I think that, that there really is kind of a metaphysical the figurative heart, of course. Sure, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah of course. Everything of is course. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really think that, that there's a lot happening with that one line mm. that uh, really provides you with an insight into the philosophy of who Mike McCready is. I, I like that. I think it's there's a lot of lyrics in this. And I think I mentioned it a couple episodes back when we did um, our favorite non eddie written lyrics that a lot of times it feels feels like if it's not true that the non eddie songs about a topic that's been done before by the band and really by eddie um they feel like that person's been saving up their best stuff for their one moment to have a song about xyz and this was the first time i believe if i'm not mistaken that mike got lyrics onto a pearl jam song yeah and he just oh you know he let it pour out he let it pour out and he, and he needed six and a half minutes to do it um, because he needed that buildup. And we've talked about before how the whole intro and the slow buildup were necessary. Um, I think even in my retracking, I kind of walked through like every 20 seconds, like what that meant and why I felt it was demanding of, of a certain feeling. And it, it brings you up like um, going up plateaus to get to a certain um, apex. And that's what that, um, that's what this moment is. And to be able to kind of dive into each line as its own micro lyric, if you will, I think is special, uh, especially from a guy that's not a usual writer of lyrics. He's not the Eddie Vedder. You could, you could say how many songs by Eddie have this quality? Many. Some, no, but many do. And the fact that Mike comes in first, first try and has these layers, it's pretty good. It is. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. I heard a rumor that uh, there's some talented gentlemen in this group. Yes, Gosh. that is true. That is true. Took them a while to get there, apparently. No, yeah, I'm yeah, joking. Yeah. Okay. God, we love you guys, uh, and we are blessed that you're still making music for us. Absolutely. Uh, if you're listening to us. Um, no, which they're not. <laughs> uh, you know, send us an email. We'd love to have you on the show. All right, let's get to our lyric. No. Hello, we just did that. Let's get to our live cut of the week. Ready to stand up! All right, our live cut of the week, going back to the mid-aughts. Mm -hmm. What do you got for me? This was a little tricky. Oh, We're coming why? home. Well, it was tricky for me, and I'll tell you why. Because... The intro to this song to me is everything. It was what hooked me on this track when I first heard it. It brought me to, to some more epic. It was, it was just dripping with 70s, just epic rock to me, mm -hmm. uh, which is obvious given who wrote it. But uh, 
I'm listening to all these different live cuts and, and I'm listening what that just the perfect capturing of, of those piano notes when they come in and, and, and Mike's guitar and Stone's guitar and just, just the swelling of sound and how it all comes together. It, it, there was a time where I would not let, I'd be on the uh, scavenger hunt for the best version of the song. And I would not listen past the first uh, in the minute and a half of the intro because if they didn't nail the intro mm. from a sound engineering point of view, it didn't matter to me how amazing the performance was. It, it just, it, there was something about the essence of this track that was lost. This particular version, I think, is, is exemplary. It's outstanding. And uh, the other reason I think that it's so important to, to really nail the intro is because when you have a song this long, <laughs> it's really important that the first act, because that's kind of what I'm going to call mm-hmm. it, is good. Uh, because I feel like it sets the tempo for the entire track. And uh, uh, we're coming home with this one. I say home because it's Los Angeles, but it's Los Angeles on July 9th, 2006. I had not lived in LA at that point in time. You were here and saw the show, but I was not. I was mm-hmm. actually up in San Francisco. I had just recently, I think it was, I don't know if I saw the, the, uh, you will have seen them Pacific like Auditorium. five days later. Yeah. I saw them like on a, a two or three shows. I think they mm-hmm. did two or three or four. Billy Graham. Uh, yeah. At the Bill Graham. So I, I saw those shows in San Francisco when I was still living up North. So I, I uh, remember keeping track, actually, of the, on set list. That I, found, I was curious, like, what are they playing? What are they playing? Because I was trying to guess what I might hear. And I remember seeing this. and Oh, they played Inside Job. This is going to be cool. And sure enough, I mean, this, this, this version was, uh, was just exactly what you want to hear out of this track. Well, let's go to, uh, let's just stay right where we are in Los Angeles on July 9th, 2006.
you mentioned it, Paul, that I was there. I was. Um, How was it? <laughs> it was good. Uh, I will tell you that both shows, um, the 8th and 9th, or no, I'm sorry, the 9th and 10th, were uh, really good. And this was before the forum got its uh, makeover. Um, mm. it, had a, it had a makeover, I want to say 2013, 14, something like that. And it's um, it's lovely now. And when we go see the Pearl Jam in May or June, whatever, whatever the hell it happens, it'll be in that refurbished forum. Uh, mm. It'll be the first time they've played the forum since 06. Mm. And it was great. Uh, the next night, I believe, I believe it was the 10th, the second night was when I had my infamous run in with uh, our favorite singer. But um, this <laughs> night, this night uh, they put Inside Job. And for me, kind of going back and re listening to it, there's a few things that stood out. Stone's guitar, uh, the swirling effects were wonderful. He nails that from the album. I think right after um, the band kicks in, Mike has this beautiful little ad lib guitar riff thingy that's very, it's very Mike to do it. It's very ad libby, um, but it's also very Jimmy Pagey, which obviously he's a big fan of. So I, I love that. Matt's back, backing vocals are on point. There's an intensity here that I hadn't felt um, as much outside of the 2009 ACL performance. If you can go online and find that uh, performance on YouTube, you'll see how good that performance was. Uh, obviously not in the running because it's from 09, not 06, but it's, it's, it's a great performance. And this one compares to that very um, warmly. Mike, no question, is super dialed in. I, th- I feel like he always is in LA for some reason. And the crowd ate it up. And I can attest well, he's to down that. He's here, I believe. Isn't he by the water? He's he doesn't live here, but he's here often, and he he was down here a lot with 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 uh, Shadow. Um, yeah. He's made he's made this. It's not his home, but he's made made it very homey to him. As has Eddie actually in the last handful of years. But uh, the point is, is that Mike, especially with San Diego as well, they they find something extra when they're in town. And um, this performance, you're right. They got the intro right. They got the middle right. They got the ending right, and um, it was great. It was great. What do you guys think? Do you guys have a uh, a favorite? Uh, do we miss something? Were you, were you at something at a show that featured this song, and you go, you know what? You gotta listen to uh, Tacoma, or uh, you know, some random place in Belarus. I'm sorry, I can't think of a town in Belarus. <laughs> um, no, no offense to our Belarusian fans listeners uh there you go guys that is the show for this week the first week of 2022 not 2022 okay that's very key key. that distinction is everything do your part to make sure it's 2022 the original the og and um we thank you for listening yet again we're entering uh this is now our second year. We're almost done with our second year of the show. We're starting our our third calendar year with this uh, with this project. So we thank you for following along. Again, as Paul said, get on your platform of choice. Give us a subscribe. Give us a rating, a review. Follow us on the socials. And uh, we will see you the next time. And until we do, you have been listening to... The State of Love and Trust. Love and Trust.